Today we're going to focus on the administration of medication uh, with continuous fluids. So for this skill, the patient will already have the IV initiated as well as some type of fluids um, continuously running through that IV. Um, we're going to focus on two different administration methods with um, continuous fluids and we'll, eat, we'll do them each separately. Um, so if you look in your lab manual, again, your first step is to confirm your order and gather your supplies. So again, as with every um, skill that you're going to do, you will always confirm that order and make sure that you have the order for the appropriate medication for the appropriate route. Um, as far as gathering supplies, I'm going to go um, into detail with the supplies that you're going to need for each one. So we'll uh, talk about that in just a few seconds. The second step in your skill is to check compatibility and compare the medication with the MAR. Anytime you are putting two medications together, it is crucial that you check the compatibility. There's a couple of different methods that you can use to check compatibility. Um, first of all, you can consult your intravenous medications drug book. If you'll flip it op open and um, look for compatibility, the med book will tell you what compatibility this medication has and then it lists the other medications. Another possible way is to use a compatibility um, chart, and again, a lot of times in the back of your drug book or in your medication room, you may have a poster or some other method, and so what you're going to do is you're going to find the two medications, find where, they're, where they meet, and see if it says they're compatible. So again, that's very crucial to check because sometimes if we put two incompatible medications together, that can cause that uh, solution to crystallize and then actually harm the patient's veins or even become systemic. So you want to do that before you even start preparing the medication, is making sure that whatever the patient has hanging is compatible with the medication that's ordered by the physician. Uh, and again, we want to check that MAR to make sure that we are checking our five rights um, with our patient information. So we want to do that with our MAR. Uh, number three says wash your hands and don clean gloves. Um, gloves are an important aspect of IV medications. The main reason is that you are dealing with um, tubing that is located inside the patient's uh, vein. If this gets pulled out, then we could have blood and therefore we could have um, an issue. So it's really important that no matter what your um, skill you're performing that you always wear gloves with IV administration, whether it's giving an IV push, an IV piggyback, and of course starting the IV. So we're going to put on just some clean non-sterile gloves. At this point um, we're going to go into two separate um, skills. The first skill in your lab manual is um, administering an IV piggyback medication or an IVPB. So for this instance, what you're going to need is you're going to need your medication that is listed in your order and that's on your MAR. For this instance, we are going to be administering Rocephin, 1 gram, IV piggyback. The order is for every 12 hours, so it's a routine medication. We will also need a secondary or a piggyback um, administration set. So it is a shorter tubing and is meant to be hung with a primary tubing. Then the other thing that we'll need will be our IV, or excuse me, our alcohol preps. So, in looking underneath the IV piggyback administration, you see A says calculate the flow rate if not indicated on the label. Depending on your facility, the flow rate may be listed on your label, it could be listed on your MAR, or you may actually have to go to your IV drug book and look that up. Um, for this one, if you want to look it up, it says their rate of administration is a single dose over 30 minutes. So again, we're going to be administering this medication over 30 minutes, so we're going to set that pump uh, to that appropriate amount. It also says that you can check with pharmacy. If you can't find any information on how fast to administer the medication, um, consult your pharmacy. Uh, B says open the secondary or piggyback administration set. So again, we're going to open our tubing. Inside the administration set, what you're going to find is um, a hanger, which we'll talk about here in just a minute, and then the tubing. So we're going to pull off the tape that kind of holds it together. Um, everything that is sterile is covered, and we'll talk about that here in just a second. 
So we're going to take the tubing out of the package. The very first thing that you want to do anytime you take tubing out of the package, no matter if it's our primary tubing or our secondary or piggyback, is you always want to close that clamp. Uh, in just a second, we're going to actually spike the medication, and we want to have full control so that way we don't lose the medication. So we're going to close the clamp. Um, next, we're going to grab the medication. And again, depending on where you are, you may actually do this in the medication room, or you may do it at the patient's bedside. And again, that's going to depend on your clinical facility. Um, first thing that we're going to do is we're going to pull the cap off the medication. Next, we're going to pull the cap off the spike. Remember that with your tubing, the spike is the sterile part of the tubing. So we want to make sure that once we take the cap off, we don't touch it with anything that's non-sterile. Take the cap off, set it to the side. Next, we're going to kind of twist and turn. Um, it depends on the type of plastic that your medication is in. Some are a little bit harder to get into. Some are fairly easy. Also, just as a side note, um, some medications that are given IV piggyback come pre-prepared. They're already ready. They're liquid form. Others that you will see will have liquid in the top part and a vial that's attached that's powder. And you have to reconstitute that. So again, depending on your clinical facility, your instructor may have to help you uh, in figuring out how to actually reconstitute that medication. But for today, today's demonstration, we're going to just use some that's already, um, already prepared. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our tubing and we are going to squeeze the drip chamber. So this is the um, part of the tubing that's the drip chamber and that's actually what we can do. We can watch it drip. For a lot of the tubings, they will have a line that tells us where to fill. Um, if it doesn't have the line, then you can just fill it to about halfway. So we're going to fill it about halfway with this one and you just squeeze and it's going to drop a certain amount. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is hang up the piggyback bag and we are going to prime our tubing. Again, any time IV tubing is used, it's extremely important to prime the tubing so that we prevent an air embolism. Again, we are dealing with an antibiotic with this one, so we want to make sure uh, even before we go into the patient's room, number one, that we understand what medication we're giving. Um, two, since we're giving an antibiotic, we want to make sure that the patient doesn't have, an, ha doesn't have any type of allergy. So we're going to prime the tubing. We don't want to lose very much because, again, this is a, a antibiotic. You can have your garbage can readily available. And we're going to open up the roller clamp and just let enough through to get rid of all the air and any bubbles that are there. With this type of tubing, you can actually leave the cap on, um, which prevents any type of contamination from the, the cap. Um, the next thing that we're going to do um, is just verify that drug and dosage again. Uh, again, because we're going into the venous system, which is going to go straight into the heart, it's very important to make sure that we have all of our information validated, repeated, um, verified that we are giving the right patient the right medication at the right time. So again, we want to do all of our checks before we do any type of IV medication where it's IV push or IV piggyback. So we're going to properly identify the patient. So if we were coming into the patient's room now, we would bring our medication, come into the patient's room, check the identity of the patient by asking them name, birth date, verifying that with the MAR uh, and their ID bracelet. Uh, again, since we're infusing an antibiotic, we want to double check for those allergies. Um, next, we're going to hang it, if we haven't already, we're going to hang it on the pole. And also, we're going to hang the IV, the routine, the continuous fluids, uh, we're going to hang that lower. So again, the pack comes with a hanger. We're going to take the primary fluids, hang it lower than our piggyback. Okay. Next, we're going to get our alcohol prep. We are going to clean the port that is closest to the continuous fluids, again for five seconds. Next we're going to take our cap off. Hang it there. And then we're going to adjust our flow rate. 
Uh, depending on what the patient has, if it's just by gravity, then we may have to actually count our drops per minute. If it is going by um, a pump, then we're going to set our pump to the piggyback um, section. So for this one, remember we talked about um, our drug book said that we needed to give it in 30 minutes. So if we look at our container, we have 100 milliliters. So again, when you're dealing with IVs, you may have to do a lot of math. So if we want to give 100 milliliters over 30 minutes, then we're going to set our pump at 200 milliliters per hour in order to get that infused at the right time. Also, for dealing with a pump, we have to set the volume to be infused. So again, our bag contains 100 milliliters. So the rate is going to be 200 milliliters per hour, and then the volume to be infused will be 100 milliliters per hour. Um, so we're going to let that infuse over the appropriate time. Um, and then once we get it hung, again, we're going to take off our gloves, wash our hands like we normally do. Um, we're going to assess for any type of side effects, any complications, and then again, we're going to document. And again, remember for documentation for medications, if it's a routine medication, it can just be on the MAR. If it's a STAT, one-time PRN, those are going to need to go on the MAR as well as the nurse's notes. Um, the second way that we can administer medications with continuous fluids is by doing the IV push medications. Um, so for this route, again, our patient already has the IV started and they have continuous fluids infusing. So for this instance, what we're going to need is our alcohol prep, our syringe, and our medication. Also need our non-sterile gloves because, again, we're dealing with um, an IV which could come out. And, again, we want to be prepared in case um, we are having to take care of the IV that's been pulled out. So what we're going to do is we are going to first draw up our medication to the syringe and determine the rate of infusion. Um, so for this instance, since it's IV push, our order is, again, to give Lasix 20 milligrams. So, again, we're going to refer to our drug book, we're going to turn it to our furosemide or Lasix, and we're going to look and see how long we need to administer this IV push medication. So, again, for this one, each 40 milligrams should be given over one to two minutes. Our order is for 20 milligrams. So, this is 20 milligrams to one milliliter, so we're going to be given the 20 milligrams, and you can divide your time by half according to your drug book. Um, into 30 seconds to a minute, I tend to go for the longer period of time. So, again, depending on if you have a new vial, you're going to open up your syringe. We're giving 20 milligrams, which is one milliliter. So I'm going to put one milliliter into my syringe. Go ahead and clean my vial. air in the vial, then pull up my one milliliter. Again, making sure that I do not have any air. In my syringe. And again, this can be done either in the medication room or at the patient's bedside, again, depending on your facility. I'm going to drop the cap on there. Um, we're going to take this as well as our alcohol prep into the patient's room. Again, we're going to verify name, birth date with the MAR as well as their ID band. Um, so we've got everything prepared. The next thing that we're going to do is we're now going to clean the port that is nearest the patient. Okay. So remember, for the IV piggyback, IVPB, we went to the port closest to the bag of fluids. For this one, we are going to go to the port closer to the patient. And again, it's because we want this medication to have um, a quick effect, so we don't want to be pushing through um, a long tubing. We want to make it shorter. So we're going to go up to this port. Again, we're going to clean it for five seconds. We're going to take our cap off of our syringe, again, since we're dealing with a needless system. We've already looked up how fast to give it, what the side effects are, indications. We're going to attach our syringe. Okay. 
Next, in order to prevent this medication from backflowing into the tubing, what we want to do is right above the port, we are going to pinch the tubing. So we're just going to pinch it closed. And what that does is while we are pushing the medication, it keeps it going in a forward direction instead of backing up. Because again, we want the patient to get the full effect of the medication um, quickly instead of waiting for minutes, maybe even hours, for that medication to be pushed down into it. So again, we're going to hold our watch close. We're pushing. And again, you can divide it up into, if we're giving one milliliter over one minute, we can divide it up and give a fourth of a milliliter over 15 seconds. So we're going to push the medication. While we're pushing, we're just watching the patient, watching their response, making sure they're not having any um, adverse effects from the administration of the medication. So again, for time purposes, we're going to say that it's been one minute. We've pushed all the medication. We're going to open our tubing back up. Sometimes it gets a little crimp in there where we've held it. Make sure that we've straightened that up. And what's going to happen is the medication from the continuous fluids is still going to flow and push the rest of that medication on into the patient's venous system. We're going to take off our syringe. Again, we're going to put any type of um, material that we've used, anything that has a syringe, needle, glass containers, all that is going to go into our sharps container. We are going to take off our gloves. Um, dispose of them, wash our hands, all of our alcohol prep containers, um, packaging, all that's going to be thrown away. And again, we're going to assess for any side effects from the patient um, and document. A couple of things that I want to pinpoint when we're dealing again with IV push medications is checking compatibility. Again, it's very crucial that if you have two medications that you are giving that are going to join together, we always check compatibility. The rule is if we don't know if it's compatible, then we don't give them together. We may have to start another IV uh, in a separate uh, location. That's fine if that's going to improve patient safety. Um, also, we want to make sure that we understand the time appropriate to push medications or to administer medications. Again, make sure that when you are at your clinical uh, facility, before you come get your clinical instructor to let him or her know that you have an IV push or IV piggyback medication, that you have already looked up your information. You know what the drug is, you know what it's for, you know the side effects, you know the indications, you know how fast to either push it or to administer it. Those are very crucial aspects. Again, we always wear gloves when we're dealing with IVs. We also always check patient identity to make sure that they're getting the correct medication. Also, after any type of IV medication, because again, we're going right into the venous system, we always check for those side effects.